One of our main goals for Robot in Three Days was to stay on task and organized throughout the entire event. So we took all of the information from our brainstorming session after the kickoff for Fright Frenzy and we moved it into separate tasks and sprints for each aspect of the robot. We split our team into different groups and as we started our sprints, we put our goals inside of the backlog and as we did them, we moved them to in progress and whenever we finished them, we erased them. This really helped us stay on task and organized throughout the entire event and it really just set the tone for the rest of our year. We hope to stay organized and we hope to have as good of a um, season as we did at Robot in Three Days. This year for our game strategy, we met with a previous FTC coach to talk about our overall plan for the year. Our first thing is that we want to prioritize the shared shipping hub over our alliance shipping hubs as tilting the shared shipping hub gives us 40 points which is quite a lot because we're taking away 20 points from the opposing team and giving ourselves 20 points. Uh, we also want to pick up the shipping element in autonomous after scanning the barcode so that we can drop it off at the correct level. Uh, after that we will just um, focus on scoring ducks since they're worth quite a lot of points. Uh, for our overall robot design this year, we want to make it small enough that it can go around the barriers, but also capable of going over the barriers because that will help us have less chance of uh, getting in the way of or colliding with our alliance partner. And if they break down, then we can still get around them and score points. For endgame, we will prioritize the ducks since they're worth quite a lot of points and of course focus on unbalancing the shipping hub as well. For our chassis testing for Robot in Three Days, we tested four distinct chassis. One was the Holonomic. The Holonomic is a four-wheeled chassis where each wheel is located at a 90 degree angle from all the others, making it into a square or diamond formation. This allows it to move forward and backward, but also straight side to side and move in an entire 360 degree range of movement. We chose this chassis due to its ability to move very quickly and be very agile. It was also tall enough above the ground that it would not high center and completely clear the barricades. After testing the holonomic chassis, we found that it did end up in fact getting stuck on the barricades with multiple of its wheels or just one getting stuck between the two bars. It was also not go build a based. Instead, of, we used a wood board for this, meaning it would be hard to add our different attachments to it. Our second chassis we tested was the six-wheel drivetrain on our Rover Ruckus robot. This, this utilized 96 millimeter wheels with two Omni wheels in the front and two in the back, allowing it to pivot around its center axis. We chose this chassis due to it being pre-built, fast, and also difficult to high center. After testing this chassis, we realized that it was clunky, could get stuck on the spikes, and of course unable to strafe, which led to some issues with controlling it. That said, it did prove that it was unable that this kind of design was unable to be high centered due to its six wheel nature. Our third chassis that we tested was the 120 millimeter chassis. It was originally supposed to be a six wheel drive robot, but it turned out to be a four-wheel drive because we did not order all the parts that we needed. It was anticipated to be fast, not easy to high center, and easy to scale down. Um, one thing, things that we learned about it was it could not get stuck, but it was very hard to control due to the fact that it, could, it had no straping capabilities. Our fourth chassis that we tested was the Strafer the Google Strafer chassis. We have experience with this chassis and we know it's agile and it's easy to scale down. Uh, we also saw that it had potential to get over the obstacle. Some things that we learned about this chassis is that, is that it's easy to control, but it could get high centered and it just struggled to get over the pipes. The Strafer traffic chassis trouble with getting over the barricades came from the U-channel, which housed the motors, hitting the barricade before the wheel did meaning the wheel would never be able to get over the barricade. To fix this, in our next strip of design, we moved the wheels forward, making it so that they would contact the beam first, allowing it to get right over the barricade. 
Second problem we needed to address was the ability for the chassis to get high center. To do this, we rotated all of the chassis drive motors uh, vertically and implemented, raised the chassis bed high enough to where it was above the barricade, therefore making it so it was unable to get high centered. So this is a slide design, and the reason that we wanted to use slides, this is one of two, is because we thought that it would be valuable to be able to get cargo to the shipping hub without having to move the robot too much, especially if we can make our slides operate quickly. So our intention is to have a bucket around, uh, attached to this uh, go rail right here, and then we intended to have it extend out and then hopefully by a mechanical stop or something like that without the use of a motor or servo, um, dump it out and then come back down just with gravity. So this design incorporates a drawer slide into it and while it is uh, decently short, it can fit into a pretty compact space, which is especially valuable in this uh, challenge. And while it is pretty robust, it is also quite heavy, which on the flip side is not something you want since speed is also very valuable. Um, this design, we were uh, initially thinking about trying to use a servo like this one in order to power it, however, um, we decided that a lot more power was needed in order to make this uh, operate quickly, so in the future we are definitely going to change that. And then we also have not gotten too much of a chance to validate and um, really test out any of these designs, so that is also something that we need to do. Uh, especially with our connection here. It's very wobbly and that is uh, not good. So we are going to fix that. Thank you. This is the red prototype we designed. The first prototype is that it extends far and it is light. The disadvantages to this design is that it is weak and slow. In the future we plan on changing the servo out for a motor, changing the design to a cascading pulley design and validating it further. All right, so I will be talking, I worked on the intake during robot three days, so I will be talking about the intake today. And so for our intake, we took some inspiration from uh, Kettering University's robot in three days, as well as the Gobilda robot in three days. And also we took some inspiration from uh, lack from our previous experiences with intakes, such as uh, Rover Ruckus, which used the same elements, the same uh, yellow cubes and white balls. Uh, we used, we actually used some rubber bands for that, and we decided to go against that. And also, it took and it intaked the elements and then lifted up the entire thing which we decided to go, which we did not like. And we also, we took some inspiration from last year's intake, which we we had some cut, some Gobilda gecko wheels, which we cut like the, some portions out of so that they were really flexible. But uh, we decided to go for a, some 3D printed wheels using uh, NinjaFlex TPU. And because that, that gives us a lot of, uh, customization options for our wheels. We can just do whatever we want with them. And so we specifically just made them really long and flexible. And I'll explain why that's good in just a second. What is good about our intake is that it is quite good at picking up the frame. It is good at that. Um, and it can be a fixed intake and not like rotate because of our 3D printed wheels because they are long enough and flexible enough that they can, uh, it can intake the block and flex and still, it can still like move the block, but then it flexes so it doesn't like get jammed and then it puts it in the thing. Oftentimes the reason people would have it rotating separately from like the bucket thing was so that it, uh, it, so that it doesn't, so that it doesn't get jammed. But having the flexible wheels Having them this flexible is that it allows us to not have to do that. All right, so some flaws with our intake is that 
it would be very heavy to lift like the entire intake on like a linear slide or something, which we're thinking about using. And so we, we decided to actually like detach the bucket from the rest of the intake. And I've actually already done that. So hopefully the idea is that it will intake the freight and then uh, and get put it into the bucket. And the bucket will go up on like the linear slide by itself and then dump out. And this will be a lot lighter and easier to uh, take up, to move up. And another problem is that our intake is seven inches, is about seven inches wide. And we want to try to fit in the 13 inch wide space. And so that's just a little bit too wide for us. And so that is a problem. All right. So some future things that we want to address and look at um, and just changes we might want to make. We need to actually test that the robot, that it, we actually need to test that it, on the robot, that it will work well and like drive around with it and try to pick up some stuff. And we might want to speed up this motor because this is the same motor we used for Rover Ruckus and it was a little slow that year and so we might want to speed that up. And we may need a ramp going from the intake to the bucket to help just get it up up there and the transition to get it into the bucket. And we might want, we're probably gonna to need to redesign the intake to, you, to be a lot thinner and probably only use one wheel. And so it would look a lot more like Go Builders uh, intake. And so that would be good. That would also be good because with one wheel, it would allow us to, to be a little bit more precise with what uh, freight we're picking up and get specifically what we want because we can only pick up one freight. All right, that is it for the intake for our robot in three days. Our carousel spinner was designed and inspired by the simplest and easiest method we could think of to turn it, and that is just a vertical motor attached to a shaft that is turning a 72 millimeter gecko wheel. This gecko wheel did turn the carousel and maintain good traction with it. Um, few problems we had, this does take up a lot of space. One way we think we could get around that is by using a servo to turn this wheel instead of a motor, which would obviously be less weight, take up a lot less space. And another problem we have was the gecko wheel was a little too high on our carousel. Um, how we think we could get around this is by shorting, shortening up this U-channel by just one hole spacing and putting multiple wheels on here to allow for greater tolerance from field to field.